2024 Mercedes-Benz GLB Class Review, Baby 3 Row Done Right. It's not as cheap as it used to be, but it's still a surprisingly good small SUV. 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLB 35. View 27 photos. Pros. Huge space and great MPG for its segment. High style interior. Abundant tech options. Spunky AMG 35. Ons, unrefined transmission and throttle response. Infotainment system is flashy but can overwhelm. In a world where small SUVs can easily fall into impractical penalty box territory, the Mercedes-Benz GLB class is a breath of fresh air. Like many of its peers, it's big enough, versatile enough and premium enough to warrant the elevated price it commands and make it a genuine luxury offering. Even if it is among the cheaper options Mercedes offers. What's the GLB's secret? Well, small SUVs go, it's actually pretty big inside. Edit the practical, boxy shape and whip-smart packaging. Combine to deliver a usable, comfortable space with a family-friendly back seat and class-dominating cargo carrying capacity. Material quality and design of the interior are both above average for the segment. There's no shortage of tech goodies from Mercedes Deep Toy Box available. Just know that infotainment can be a bit overwhelming to find what you're looking for. Another potential downside is the GLB 250's powertrain, particularly its dual-clutch automated manual transmission, which can be slow in responding to throttle inputs and generally feels less refined than what you'll find in rivals, most notably the BMW X1. In other dynamics regards, it's quite competent. While the AMG Prep GLB 35 goes much further than mere competence by basically being a hot hatch with better visibility. Runs circles around the likes of the X1, Audi Q3, Lexus UX and even the Mercedes-Benz GLA as a practical daily driver. Ultimately, we recommend both GLB models. Interior and technology, passenger and cargo space, performance and fuel economy, what it's like to drive, pricing and trim levels, crash ratings and safety features, what's new for 2024. Mercedes put the GLB under the knife for a little nip and tuck for 2024. Fundamentals remain the same, but the engine gets a mild hybrid boost and the styling and interior both received attention. Big inclusion in this round of updates is the latest version of Benz's MBUX infotainment system. On is the old 7-inch base display, the new standard. It's improved performance and wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay compatibility. The old console-mounted touchpad controller is also gone, leaving behind a shallow be storage pad of questionable value. Some behind-the-scenes updates improve the performance of the GLB's active safety systems and, for the first time, heated steering wheel can be optioned with AMG appearance packages. What are the GLB interior and in-car technology like? No matter where you look in the GLB, its clever packaging impresses offers lots of storage in both the passenger cabin and cargo area, making it more practical than most luxury offerings in this segment, and indeed many others. GLB's driving position is excellent, and its front and second row seats are comfortable and supportive with plenty of adjustment. GLB is on the inexpensive side for a Mercedes-Benz. The quality of materials and available options are on par or better for expectations at this price point. Fancier options will drive up the price, of course. But even the fundamental components are high quality and precise. Every GLB includes the last iteration of Mercedes-Benz's MBUX infotainment suite. Which is controlled by a collection of redundant input choices a new dual 10.25-inch display, steering wheel controls and natural language commands. 
Gold Center Console Touchpad has been evicted for 2024, though, which is okay from a functionality standpoint. We probably used it less than anything else, but the oddly shaped storage pad that is left in its wake is questionably useful, an iPhone 15 won't fit in it for example, and seems like a waste of space in what is otherwise a well laid out interior. Also, while we like the infotainment systems, have it your way approach, to inputs and appreciate this system's rapid responses and pretty graphics, it just isn't always simple to use. Standard wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are both great to have. We appreciate that Mercedes makes it easy to quickly go between the MBUX and Apple Android interfaces with permanently docked icons in the screen's upper left corner. How big is the GLB? The GLB's wheelbase is closer to that of many midsize offerings, and its overall length exceeds that of most competitors don't really notice this behind the wheel, it still feels pretty small, and this extra length combined with the boxy design results in the GLB being a cargo hauling rockstar. In paper, Mercedes says the GLB offers 24 cubic feet with the second row seats up. In reality, there's actually far more than that number would imply. Its rear load floor can be lowered to accommodate larger items, but even with the floor in its standard position, GLB can swallow more cargo than crossovers in the bigger, pricier compact segment. This extra length translates into tons of second row space, where passengers will find sliding and reclining seats for extra comfort, you don't get those in the mechanically related GLA. The combination of fold-down seatbacks and sliding bases can also be exploited for additional cargo space if the roomy hatch alone will not suffice, making the GLB a versatility rockstar, too. GLB also has available third-row seating, which its smaller competitors and even those in the larger compact class lack. Suppose this option doesn't hurt. These optional rearmost seats just aren't that habitable, even for kids. You'd skip them or get a non-luxury three-row vehicle for the same price. What are the GLB 250 and AMG 35 fuel economy and performance specs? GLB 250 name indicates that the GLB in question has the base engine. 2.0-liter turbocharged inline-4 producing 221 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, with a 13-horsepower boost coming from its mild hybrid assist system. It has an 8-speed dual-clutch automated manual transmission and standard front-wheel drive. In this configuration, the GLB 250 is rated at 25 mpg city, 33 mpg highway and 28 mpg combined. The 4 Modic all-wheel drive system, those numbers drop to 24 mpg city, 32 mpg highway and 27 mpg combined. Mercedes AMG GLB 35 also has a 2.0 liter turbo. It's been worked over by Mercedes AMG Tuning Division to produce 302 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It'll hit 60 in 5.4 seconds. The 8 speed DCT and standard all wheel drive are also special AMG versions. It achieves 21 mpg city, 26 mpg highway, and 23 mpg combined. There is technically an electric GLB available. Although it's officially known as the Mercedes-Benz EQB, you can read our EQB first drive review here. The new Mercedes-Benz GLA and the new Mercedes-Benz GLB view 5 photos what's the GLB like to drive. GLB 250 is more about luxury and comfort than performance. Thanks to its long wheelbase and supple suspension, it delivers in spades for this segment. The optional adaptive suspension will tighten up the handling on demand. But even with that option that we're guessing will rarely show up on dealer lots, the GLB 250 never rises to the level of fun to drive. 
it's perfectly okay, though, it doesn't need to be. As for what's under the hood, the GLB 250's standard 4-cylinder provides plenty of punch but does come off a little thrashy compared to what you'll experience in pricier Benz models. Dual-clutch automated manual transmission can also be slow to engage, resulting in delayed responses to throttle inputs and a general lack of powertrain refinement. Indeed, dynamic refinement in general is where the GLB shows its lower price tag when in comparison to pricier Benzes like the GLC. It's a reduction at least commensurate with its price tag though, maybe not the transmission, and better than what you'll find in some rivals in the segment. As for the AMG GLB35, it is legitimately fun even if it doesn't quite reach the level of extra tall hot hatch, as the smaller GLA35 does. Larger footprint and extra tallness result in it being not nearly as agile or darty. Nevertheless, like the GLA and other AMG35 models, GLB35 is just on, from the second you pop it into drive. Snappy and quick 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission cracks off upshifts with a pop that accentuates and underlines every shift. Indeed, the level of drama and added theater encourages a heavy right foot. Thanks to its AMG tuned chassis, you can still happily hustle this little crossover around a winding road. The sport drive mode selected, body motions are nicely controlled with the stiffness and sharpness you'd expect from an AMG. Steering response is a bit numb, though, and its weighting isn't as sharp as other AMG 35s. What other Mercedes-Benz GLB reviews can I read? Mercedes-Benz GLA. GLB gets subtle design updates and more tech for 2024 AMG's 35 batch models go under the knife as well Mercedes AMG GLB 35 road test review take a closer look at the 302 horsepower AMG tuned GLB that injects a spunky amount of fun into what is otherwise a surprisingly sensible small SUV 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 first drive the real deal our initial drive of the GLB features more details about its design and engineering. It really hasn't changed much since then. 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 luggage test, it can hold all this. Get the official numbers. The boxy and versatile GLB punches above its weight class. All of this stuff fits in the cargo area. 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB Class Interior Storage Driveway Test Senior Editor James Ryswick breaks out odds and ends to stuff in it.